I was reminiscing with Mark Grace last night, former Cubs Diamondbacks All-Star first baseman, and uh, reflecting back on the 1998 home run chase. Mark, of course, didn't hit home runs, but he had a great seat for by choice. Right, Gracie? You didn't hit home runs back then? Hey, Sam may not combined for 83 home runs that year. He had, he had 66 and I had 17. <laughs> hey, that was a one-two punch if you ask me. All right, what do you, if I say 1998 and that home run chase, like what's one thing that you remember the most about that? Oh, my goodness. Uh, can, I give you, can I give you three things sure. that I remember about it? Because, um, you know, 98 was, was obviously the, the – it was a big deal, Sammy and McGuire and the home runs and the excitement over that. And every single one of their ABs was, was going on ESPN and, and it was a big deal. But also for me that year, uh, the, the rookie emergence of Kerry Wood was a huge deal in Chicago and in baseball. You know, he had struck out 20 uh, struck in, him and I think Bob Feller are the only two to ever strike out their age. And uh, <laughs> that was, think about that. You know, and so, so that was a big deal. And then obviously uh, a big deal for me and Chicago and the Cubs was, was uh, the postseason. You know, we, we were in contention all year. We ended up winning a one game playoff against the San Francisco giants to, to go and meet the Braves. And, and we lost the Braves in, in the next series, but, you know, three of the biggest stories in baseball were going on in Chicago: the home run chase, Kerry Wood and his Rookie of the Year campaign, and then the Cubs being in the postseason. That day with Kerry Wood, I think it's the greatest performance I've ever seen because I, that was what Kerry Wood's fourth or fifth start. He's facing the Astros. They had a really good hitting lineup. And, they had a great hitting lineup. Yes. And I saw a guy throw a frisbee that day, and not many pitchers <laughs> can throw a frisbee. Kerry Wood threw a Frisbee that day, and I don't think they had any ch- – I mean, you're there at first base. I don't know what you remember about that, but those were grown men who had no chance against Kerry Wood. Two Hall of Famers in Bagwell and Biggio, uh, more great hitters in Derek Bell, Moise Salou. Uh, you know, they, they, had, they had a great lineup. So that said, uh, I remember I, – I, I people – you know, after about the second inning, I was just like, you know what? I can go out there and put my glove on my head, <laughs> and because because these guys these guys are not these guys aren't hitting the ball. They're not going to hit the ball. <laughs> if they fouled if they fouled one off, we were like, man, is, is Kerry all right? That was one but of. The- I think the metrics, you know, the the propeller heads have have said that that is the greatest game ever pitched in the modern era. Yep. So, I mean, you guys know more about metrics than I do, so I, I, I'm not going to argue with it. The uh, home run chase with – I don't know if McGuire enjoyed it, but you were around Sammy every day, and it, it felt like Sammy was starting to eat this up. He was enjoying it a lot more than Mark McGuire. McGuire said he felt all this pressure, but what was, what was Sammy like during that, uh, that year? No, he was uh, he, he was love he was loving every second of it, and and once again it was it was uh, not only was was it him, but it was also our team. So we were all into it because we were we were winning games, and and going for the postseason. Sammy was going for the postseason, and also going for the home run record, and and, and so uh, it was it, he he loved every second of it, and uh, and and we. We we all we all got into it. I mean, it was a it was a it was a big deal. It was a really big deal. But, but you're right. Sammy was the one always with a smile on his face, and seemed like uh, Mac, whom I've known, you know, since college. He was at USC when I was at San Diego State, and it, it just you know he's a, and he's a good dude, and he's a and he's a fun loving guy. But you, you know, he, he did uh, he, he did have a bit of a sourpuss attitude about it. I would say. Yeah, I, I just I look back on that, and I, I remember when McGuire broke the record, uh, Roger Maris's record, and you were at first base, and you right. congratulated him, which I think opened the door for all of your teammates in the infield to congratulate him. Did you catch any grief for congratulating McGuire after he homered? Oh, there, there was a few. There was a few people, you know, local diehard Chicago Cub uh, people, you know, that thought it was BS on my part to do it. But I just, I just hearkened back when. When I was a kid, and I, and I think we all 
people our age, Dan, all remember where we were when Hank, when Hank Aaron bo- broke up Babe Ruth's record with 715. I remember when he was running the bases, I saw Davey Lopes shake his hand after he hit the home run off uh, Al Downey. And I, and I, that's, and I thought, you know what, that's all right. You know, and then when Mac did it, I was, it wasn't so much about, you know, showing up Steve tracks or showing up anybody. I, we just witnessed history, man. You know, that, that nobody else had ever done what Mac did at that time. So I, yeah, that was pretty cool, dude. Congratulations. But, and if you, you know what, and if you, yeah, you know, if you if you didn't if you didn't like it, tough S word, you know. He's a Mark Grace, former Cub, Diamondback, All Star first baseman. But as great as McGuire and Sosa were that year, Barry Bonds was at a different level than we've ever seen in the history of the sport. And so you're at first base when Bonds is up. You're probably not worried about a liner to first. It felt like if Bonds was swinging, he was trying to hit a home run every single time. <laughs> He rarely hit a ground ball. That's for sure. He was he he was a pull you know he was a pull hitter. Uh, but and but I, I wasn't too worried about him. You know, Charlie Brown and me with a line drive because uh, <laughs> they were they were usually going over into the drink in uh, McCovey Cove. But uh, yeah, it, the thing was the thing was uh, Bonds was you know the year that he hit seventy three. I think was it was that the total seventy three? Yeah, but. The year he hit 73, he was intentionally walked so many times, so many times. I know Mac and Sosa didn't get intentionally walked near as much as as uh, as Barry did, and Barry still. So, so the bottom line, and you know those, those last you know couple of years uh, for Barry when he was hitting all the home runs, if you didn't walk him, he hit a home run. He didn't hit a single. <laughs> he didn't hit a double. If you pitched to him. If the if the catcher got down in his in his crouch behind the plate, he hit a home run. That was that was what he did. So basically, I could have, I could have put my glove on my head that those days too because it, it wasn't coming to me. Is Sosa ever going to be welcomed back by the Cubs? That's a great question. I don't really know that whole scenario. I was not in Chicago when when that divorce happened. I had, I had left a. a couple of years earlier. So I don't know uh, exactly what went on in the clubhouse and what went on. I know, uh, I know he got, uh, I know he got caught with cork in his bat. And then I know he, uh, they, there was, he left early on the last game, last game of the season, or he didn't, didn't come to, I don't know exactly what happened, but uh, you know, I think, I think, um, you know, hell, I, they welcomed me back. Why wouldn't they welcome back Sammy? Yeah, but you, you know? didn't do anything wrong. Thank you, Dan. Thank you so much. <laughs> you, 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 you've always had my back, and I'm getting getting a little misty eyed now that you said that. Yeah. But uh, but no, you know, when I left, it wasn't in under the greatest of circumstances. Uh, they have their side of the story. I have my side of the story, and there's always a third side of the story. So uh, that said, yeah, it was. And when Sammy left, there was I think there was a little more. Uh, Tension as far as how how he behaved and how uh, how things went. I, I wish I wish I had a better answer because I wasn't there. I was busy out in Arizona, you know, finishing up my career. But I I, I don't really know uh, other than that. But I would say you know for the Cubs' sake and for Sammy's sake, I think uh, you know welcoming welcoming him back would probably make a lot of fans Cub fans happy. Yeah, but it's kind of hypocritical that the Cubs celebrated those sold-out crowds because, you know, in large part or certainly a, a pretty good share of uh, Sammy Sosa, a lot of merchandise there. And then now it feels like they're distancing themselves from a PED user. So I don't I don't know if – and it's new ownership there, but I don't know if that factors in at all, Gracie. Yeah, um, it, that's, a, that's, a, that's a great point. And, it, you know, there's, there's a lot of PED users – that uh, that are not banished from their teams, uh, you know that, that like you said, you know all the merchandise, all the crowds that were there uh, to see. Because <laughs> I remember when the, the year that uh, Sammy McGuire, I remember if it was like the seventh or eighth inning, and I hit behind Sammy, and Sammy would his last, it'll be, it's going to be his last at bat, <laughs> and and he'd uh, he'd either hit a homer or he'd hit a single or he'd make an out or whatever he did. If right after his at bat was over with, 
more than half the crowd would <laughs> would would head for the exits, and not, now hitting Mark Grace, and I'm just seeing a bunch of a bunch of asses headed to the exits, and I'm just like, hey, wait a minute, y'all, I, I'm I'm pretty good at hitter too. Come on, man. How are you not tempted to use steroids? Uh, I'm going to give you the honest answer, Dan. Okay. Uh, I was a, I was a single man in Chicago and that stuff is, is bad for your get up and go. If you know what I mean? <laughs> so, so uh, I, I wanted to con- continue to have the ability to get up and go. So uh, that's a, that's a big reason. Uh, second of all, I don't think myself, my swing was conducive. I, I wasn't a fly ball hitter. I was a, I, I hit line drives and ground balls for the most part. If I, if I elevated the line drive, it would, it would go out of the ballpark. So I just don't think uh, I was never interested in it. Um, and I'm glad I didn't because now looking back on my career, my numbers were my numbers, not a syringe's numbers. They were my numbers. And I'm proud of that. 2,400 hits, 300 batting average. Um, all right, I told the story about uh, Randy Johnson the other day on the air. When you, okay. were, you were in Arizona and you were playing the Cubs, you were in Chicago, and I go to see you in the locker room, you and Luis Gonzalez, and Randy Johnson's pitching that day, and you guys convinced me to go say hello to Randy Johnson. <laughs> that didn't go well. Oops. Oops. Did, did, on game day, like you don't, I, don't, I wouldn't talk to him when he wasn't pitching. And knowing what I know now, but you guys go say hello to Unit, man. Go, come out. He'd, he'd love to, you know. Blah blah blah. I walked down there, yeah. and he just stared at me. Yeah, he's a he's a barrel of from the day. He <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we were trying anything we could to to try to get in in, uh, in Randy's head or bother him or something. It didn't matter. He's still went out and dominated us, and we had no chance. But you know, the like I, somebody asked me the other day, and to compare. Um, to the, the two best pitchers of, of at least, uh, you know, you got to throw uh, Roger Clemens in there too, but two of the best pitchers of our era, Randy, Randy Johnson and Greg Maddox. And I'm like, oh, this is interesting. I said, well, do you remember, like, uh, there, was, there was two guys that you absolutely hated in high school. You, you hated the bully that would wait for you in the, in the bathroom and steal your lunch money. You hated that guy. Well, that that was Randy Johnson on the mound. Randy was a big bully that would steal your lunch money. And then Greg Maddox, he was like the he was like the uh, the valedictorian that got a hundred on every test and set the curve at a hundred. <laughs> and you, you, you hated that guy too. That was that was Greg Maddox. So so what they had in common is they were the two guys you hated like in high school. But one was the bully reason, and the other and the other one was the valedictorian reason. I. Uh... I know that we've told this story. We had, we had Maddox on when he told this story, when he got uh, a little more excited on the mound than you would normally expect somebody to get excited. <laughs> now, now, his, I told him he really loves pitching. <laughs> his get up and go. So you're at first base, and when do you notice that Greg Maddox is – he went from 6 o'clock to midnight. <laughs> Well, he he threw a pitch, and I remember he was kind of he was kind of favoring like you know if a if a pitcher or, a, or any player kind of kind of pulls a groin or or you know they they start walking strange. So man, there, there's our there's our bread and butter guy out there, our, our Cy Young guy. I, I run to the mound like I'm like you okay, dude? And he's like, Grace, just stand in front. And I'm like, okay. And I'm like, what's going on? And he he told me basically how how excited he was to be pitching that day and <laughs> and i told him i told him i said well you just love pitching don't you and i and, and he told and he told the wrong guy too because you know i'm not going to keep that to myself <laughs> that's a that's a story that had to be shared exactly. oh my god so, so needless to say uh uh he went he went on to uh to bigger and better <laughs> things i guess you could say after that uh, but that was it's, it's just it's just one more it's just one more thing that you know you, you you can't believe these things actually happened in in the game but they did <laughs> and, and it's amazing uh you went through a lockout and a strike i believe uh and here we yeah. are with toying with 50 games um uh, we're going to have baseball? Well, I think they better. 
they better because uh, you know this this unprecedented uh, you know coronavirus stuff. You know, it's just decimated not only baseball, it's decimated sports. You know, I never realized how much I loved watching sports on TV until they were all taken away. Jeez, I was watching Matt Williams manage Korean baseball for all the. I'm just <laughs> so so, and and I'm sorry, but. Uh, you, you watch those games and you just realize, man, <laughs> Major League Baseball needs to come back. And and that said, uh, yeah, I went through I went through two. I was locked out one time and I went on strike one time. And you know the replacement players and all that it was a disaster. And you know all, all that. But I, I just recall both times that I went on strike, the court of public opinion, no matter no matter what is said and no matter what is done. Uh, uh, owners are the bad guys. No, players are the bad guys. You know, they're going to point fingers at each other. But the court of public opinion, Dan, and I think you'll agree with me, is always, always against the players. 90% of the fans are, are blame the players anytime there's a work stoppage. And I think Tony Clark and his crew, I, I think they understand that, but they need to really understand it because this, this is an important one, don't you think? Yeah, yeah. Because attendance has been dropping and you know, fans are they, they move on eventually when when they don't feel like a a, a league of sport invests in them or cares about them, uh, you know. After a while, and you know that you got the oldest target demo in all the sports is your baseball fan, and you know you're flirting with a whole generation that you're just moving on past, and uh, it's unfortunate, it really is. Well, yeah, and and, and you know uh, the the game was losing fans because. The, the beauty of the game, especially on the offensive end, uh, is is going away. You know, it's all launch angle. It's all it's all you know this launch angle and spin rate and and all the all these things have led to record not record breaking record shattering yeah. home runs and record shattering strikeouts. So. That kind of after a while, you know, the 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 beauty of the hit and run or the or the suicide squeeze or you know, it's it just or the stolen base. It's like there's only you know a handful of guys that steal bases anymore. So that that part of the game is gone, and and I think a lot of the, a lot of fans, especially the older fans, they miss the beauty of 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 baseball, and they and, and are becoming a little bored with you know the the all or nothing uh, thing that baseball has become offensively. Good to visit with you, and uh, stay in touch. Always a pleasure, my friend. Have a great rest of your day. Tell the boys I said hello. That's Gracie, Mark Grace, a former Cub uh, great, Diamondback great, and uh, won a World Series there.